David Robertson is still on the hill for the Sox. And, well, we'll see where it goes. Ninth inning, 3-3. David Robertson essentially making his first ever Major League start. Well, if this trend catches on, you could play a succession of one-run innings, depending on who scores and when they do it. Hopefully it will be quick because we have the regularly scheduled game coming well anywhere from 20 minutes to a half hour after this particular one ends and also because of the pitchers that we use and let's recap for you last night it was Albers Jennings Canely Duke Jones David Robertson so you're talking about six relievers used last night and Don Cooper realizes that the relief core the last couple of days has been used quite a bit. In relief of Jacob Turner, it was Albers, Jennings, Canely, Fulmer, Jones, and Duke. So David Robertson would like to go one inning. And, and the point here, too, that's worth mentioning, Chuck mentioned Anthony Renato, who's up from AAA. He is available for this game because he was the replacement for Chris Sale, whose suspension started yesterday. So the Sox have... Fulmer, Enoa, and Renato available in the bullpen should this game go longer than one inning or whatever it turns out to be. Jared Saltalamacchia, the batter, he takes ball number one. Saltalamacchia 0 for 3 last night in the beginning of this game, which got to the eighth inning with a White Sox lead at 3 to 2. Tigers scored in the eighth. Now a ball and a strike. Tigers scored on an RBI single from Nick Castellanos with one out, an unearned run against Nate Jones, who was harmed by his own error on the hill to lead off that inning. Well, Robertson, we mentioned, mentioned Robertson making essentially his first major league start. This is not a start officially, but he's starting the day, which is a different scenario than when you come out of the bullpen. And he looks good. Strike out number two in two batters for Robertson. Three curveballs, the third of which was missed. So Salta Lamacchia, who is a switch hitter, makes no contact. Iglesias' job is just to get on base. So you always have to watch the bunt when he's up. He also will use the whole field. And we've seen him in this game shoot one right down the right field line. That was the single in the third. Tigers loaded the bases that inning but couldn't score. Robertson feeds in a strike. Last time he opened a game, Robertson, it was on a rehab stint with the Yankees back in 2012. It was June the 12th. The Scranton Yankees were playing Rochester in lovely Batavia, New York. That season, Scranton didn't have a home field, so it bounced around the International League for home stadiums from Syracuse to Rochester to Buffalo and Batavia for a couple games. So Robertson's last quote-unquote start came in Batavia, New York. Second base, Saladino, nifty play, two down. Hard hit ball with a lot of overspin on it, and so Tyler angling his body with a high hop, able to make the one hop grab and throw it across. So we haven't seen a lot of first pitch hunting from Ian Kinsler, but this is a situation. You got two out, nobody on. He is a home run hitter, and beware the first pitch. And this is a ballpark today that has some of that daytime heating going on, that's for sure. Question is, which game time temperature do you take? Is it last night's or today's? Well, it says 89 up there, and I have to believe that that's more last night than today because it seems a touch warmer than that. You think the sun being out might make it a little hotter? I think the humidity is a lot more today than it was. Although, with all of the rain, for most of the night, it was 100% humidity. Kinsler in the air. Shuck on the charge. JB can't get there, and it gets behind him. Kinsler to second. The wind is knocking that ball down, and that was a play that Tim Anderson thought actually was going to go deeper than it wound up. 
And JB thought that Anderson might have had a shot at it, but you never know what the wind is going to do until you actually get out there and check and see for yourself. Shuck had a long way to run. He couldn't get to it. Kinsler winds up at second base. And David Robertson, a little unhappy as you would expect. Goes up as a hit. Double for Kinsler, his first hit of the game. And now Cameron Maben with a chance to give the Tigers the lead here in the ninth. Whose ball is that, do you think? Judging by the way the wind was blowing for Anderson, he's got to go out far enough and then give way if you hear from Chuck that he's going to take it. I don't think Chuck ever was in control of that to say that I've got it. See Anderson going out. Now he stops. And JB running with everything he has, he can't get to it. It looked to me like Tim Anderson was a, would have been a tough play for him, but was a whole lot closer to the baseball than JB. Fastball to 93 as the count one and two for Cameron Maben, who singled in the first and scored in this game, singled in the third, walked in the fifth, then scored the tying run in the eighth last inning last night to have reached base four times in the game. But today is a new day. And a new result. Strike three. Robertson wriggles out of it. And the Sox have a chance to win after this. Garcia, Navarro, and Shuck on the way. Only the left-hander, Justin Wilson. It's done for the 41st time. He's two and two ERA, 3.19. There you see 44 strikeouts and 36 and two-thirds innings. Fired from the New York Yankees. We've seen him in this series. Have very good stuff. Two nights ago, inning in the third. Yeah, essentially last night. If we're talking about today as <laughs> yesterday. So last night, but two nights ago, he went an inning and a third and struck out Navarro pinch hitting. You're going to need to make some red marks on your calendar, I think. Figure out which day is which. Yeah. Sunday masquerading is Saturday for the moment, then Sunday officially as Sunday after this game ends. Whenever that may be. Maybe right here. It's just one swing away. Ball one from Wilson to Garcia. Avi Garcia had a great night last night to start this game. A sack fly in the second inning. A solo homer in the fourth. His sixth home run of the year. 2-0 on Garcia. 
Sox bench currently has Justin Morneau, Omar Narvaez, and Brett Lorre available in this game. The Sox do have the availability of a 26th man in game two, with this being a quasi doubleheader. Strike two and one on Garcia. Forty four strikeouts, six walks from Wilson on two one. Tapper third base side, and it is a fair ball infield single, sixty feet down the road. And you have to love the fact that if it starts to just trickle off the grass and hug that line, it's going to stay in fair territory. For Castellanos here, you might as well not even pick up the baseball. Because, number one, Garcia's not going to second. Number two, it might spin into foul territory, although by that angle, it looked like it was going to stay there, but you never really know. There's a winning run. In the flesh. Now Navarro. Might think about bunting here, but you've got a left-hander in Shuck on deck. How do you play it? Well, I gotta believe you let him swing away. Considering he has no sacrifices this year. Let's see what Robin has in mind. Small lead at first by Avi. Ball one from Wilson with the bunt shown. If you had a real speed burner on the bench, you might think about pinch running as well. Somebody that was pure speed tool, but with the backup catcher, Justin Morneau, and hamstring injured Brett Lorry. You might see that guy in September when the rosters expand be a lot easier to carry that guy than it is now. It's a ball low at 96. Or somewhere. Well, he's shown bunt twice. So for Castellanos you've got to be charging with everything you have once the ball's on the way once you see him shorten up. And you can tell Wilson's a little bit bollocked up because of that non strike call. That was fully in the zone. Sometimes, with the bunch shown, the umpire can get crossed up a little bit. You can do that. Maybe you don't see it quite as well, or just one of those that he didn't make the right call. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Two and zero oh on Navarro, swinging away, double clutch. Garcia safe at second base. That was a wild play that could have gone much, much worse for the Sox. That's a brain cramp on the part of Iglesias because it didn't appear that either Iglesias or Kinsler knew who was going to cover. Sotomakia comes up to make a throw. There's nobody there. Pretty clear hit and run. On 2 0, now 2 and 1, and a meeting at the mound. The so meeting at the mound. Saltalamakia did, I think, have another option on this play. You think possible interference? I believe that had he come up and thrown right into Navarro, he would have gotten the interference call. So as it stands, two and one. 
Take a look at it again and watch Navarro. He swings at this one and then he steps across the plate. Had Salta Lamacchia continued his throw and made contact, he gets the call. Popped up bunt. One out. Kind of a good thing that Avi was at second base because otherwise you can easily see how it would have been a double play. You drop the head of the bat, and I know people out there saying, well, a major league hitter should bunt. Well, guess what? Not all major league hitters can bunt. And that example was one where the technique was bad. You got the pop up. So runner at second, one out, and Shuck the batter. JB takes a ball. The hope would have been to get Garcia to third with one out, and then Shuck hits a possible fly ball, though he has been more of a ground ball hitter in recent days. Two lefties on the way, Shuck and Eaton, then Anderson. If it gets that far against the hard throwing lefty Wilson. Collins, who's in right field, has a decent arm in right. But you'd have to figure with Eaton in the on deck circle, Joe McEwing, with any chance at all, is going to gamble and send Avi. Second base, Kinsler. Garcia to third, two out. So Eaton the batter, a good bat handler, and the winning run 90 feet away. One of the things that Adam won't hesitate to do, and Saltomaki has already stepped out in front of the plate, looked at Castellanos at third base, and motioned bunt. So he's already told him that that is a distinct possibility. Castellanos with a conversation with Avi. Maybe he didn't see it. Inside ball one from Wilson, who throws this year about 67% straight fastballs, 29% cutters, not much the way of a curveball that you would possibly bury and have a wild pitch winning run. He does have one wild pitch this year. Two and zero for Eaton. Anderson would be next. Then Melky Cabrera. This game started last night at 6:20 p.m. Two and zero for Eaton. Got the corner a strike. Two and one. Wilson's ready. 2 1. Fouled off. Two balls, two strikes. Well, then, when he put a little more on and stayed up, that was 97 on the inside part of the plate. Adam was able to foul it off. There you see he's gone up, down, in, out. What's left? He's going in. Two and two. Up and in. Three and two for Eaton. And remember, it's not as though you get a day off in between games. What you do in this game with your bullpen directly affects today's game, the regularly scheduled game. Fulmer loosening in the pen. He hopes to be ready for the second game. On the ground and through. Eaton drives home Avi Garcia. That was quick. 4 3, your final score. Should do this more often. Play it the next day. I told you if this catches on, those one inning games are terrific. You got a fastball right down the middle. 
And that's all Wilson was throwing him. He might have wanted it any other place, but down the middle, he took it through a vacated left side. And just like that, the game is over. Adam with his 31st run batted in. It's a game winner. So a mental mistake on the part of the Tigers. Nobody covering second base. Avi trots in with a winning run. And the Sox take advantage of a mistake on the part of the Tigers and cash in. 4-3 your final score. That's win number 47 on the year for the Sox who picked up a game in the division on Cleveland which lost yesterday. So the deficit nine and a half in the central with the victory today for the Sox in game two coming your way in roughly half an hour with Jose Quintana facing Anibal Sanchez. For a tired out bullpen that's exactly the cure all. You don't want to go any further than that if you don't have to and that's exactly what happened. So now as healthy as that bullpen can be for today. That's as healthy as it will be. Let's go downstairs Sierra Santos with the hero Adam Eaton Sierra. Adam after this one getting drawn out how good was it to get in here and get this quick win. Oh it's good. Uh, you know again when we play so long yesterday and uh, a rough couple of days um, it, it's good to be able to you know come up big for the team and and. Uh, Get a win, and hopefully we you know we can split the series. That's really what we're trying to do here. You know, losing the first two is never good for us. But uh, you know, four-game series, we win this one, we get to the next one. And uh, you know, Sanchez is going to be a really good pitcher, and uh, you know, he's going to be on top of it. But we're ready for him, and uh, you know, like I said, hopefully we can split the series. Despite all the distractions and controversy and all the attention on this team right now, you come in here, you get the job done, and you get the win, regardless of all the outside noise. Yeah, I don't want to say we're getting used to it, but. Uh, it's been kind of a weird year this year, but uh, like I said uh, many times before, we got a great group of guys in there that that uh, have a love for the game and come ready to play every day. You know, even if the results aren't there, they they come back and they're ready to play. Um, so I love those guys. I think everybody in there, you know, loves each other and, and understands it's a long season. It can it can be hectic at times, and uh, just it's it's been a tough go around. But like I said, we're ready for tonight, or excuse me, in 30 minutes to get this game going. And like I said, split the series and, and get going. We need to get going. Uh, you know, last month and a half, two months have been unacceptable, and uh, you know we got to get going uh, one way, shape, or form. So hopefully this can propel us and get us going. Well, you're ready. I can tell. Thank you very much. We'll see you in uh, 30 minutes. Steve, Jason, we'll send it back to you in the studio or up in the booth. Sierra, thank you. you know, who knows where we're going to be considering the way this game's gone? We were here last night. Now we're back. You couldn't really ask for a better ending to the first part of what will be a quasi double header today but a quick win in the first one and you're right about a bullpen that had been used two straight days extensively so David Robertson comes in he gets the win in this throws a ball real well getting out of the ninth and then you win it with two outs everybody doesn't go home exactly happy but the folks. Now we'll go to the concession stands and prepare for the second part of this one. We're going to change shirts and we'll rejoin you on that other network. But first, what? What you got? Oh, but this one is hardly used. Well, you're gently used <laughs> as well. For our producer, John Walgren, our director, Todd Benjaminson, our associate producer, Joe Grube, tech manager, Mark Harper, executive producer, Jim Corno Jr., and the entire crew. He's Steve Stone. Glib as always. I'm Jason Benetti. Subaru Post Game Live. Solo, Chuck Garfine. He's next. Sox win 4-3.